Welcome back, Islanders, to a very special one this week. It's going to be Bombo and yours truly, Sweet Tea. We're going to go over the midseason ballers. But before we get started, we're going to ask you, to, as always, to go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share, go F yourself, whatever it is that you guys want to do, have some fun, but make sure that you guys are paying attention to Fantasy Island and what we're throwing out there to you guys. We appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate everything. We just liked messing with you. We like having some fun, but we really do appreciate it. So with me, as always, is Bombo, the, the shit talker, the fo tin foil hat guy extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Love his insights. Bombo, how the hell are you doing today? Feeling great, T. Uh, good to be back on the island here with you, giving all the listeners some fantasy insight. Hopefully giving them something that'll win them their week, win them their league. But most importantly, just good to be talking football with you here on the show. Oh, I love talking football with you too, man. You know, this is a good one. We're going to be covering our midseason ballers. We're going to break it down, quarterback, running backs, receivers, and tight ends. I know that in pre-conversations, we kind of went back and forth. Do we even include tight ends? Because really, who gives a fuck about them? But Ultimately, we decided let's do it because you know what? They're still fantasy relevant somewhat. So with that said, Bombo, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. I'm going to start throwing out some quarterback names as ballers. We're going to go over three. I'm going to give you a little bit of stats and I'm going to throw it over to you. Okay. So number one, leading into this, our number one PPR fantasy quarterback of the midseason 2023 is none other than Josh. Allen. And I'm not surprised. Nobody's really surprised about that. But let me just throw out some stats that this guy has. He has over 350 yards attempted, 246 completions. He's got 2,600, literally 2,600 on the dot receiving yards, 19 tutties already midseason. But here's a stat that nobody wants to talk about because nobody wants to talk bad about Josh Allen 11 picks. That's a lot of picks, and this guy is a pick machine. This is going back to the days of, like, Brett Favre, gunsling, all that type of stuff. But before we get into that, I just kind of want to throw that out to you. I mean, it, it, one more thing, rushing yards. He has 246 yards rushing and seven rushing TDs. I mean, this guy's a fantasy beast, even though in, in the real NFL world, it doesn't matter. He, he doesn't do well. It doesn't translate to wins. But what do you think about Josh Allen as number one on this ballers list for QBs? Well, everyone that drafted Josh Allen knew what they were getting, and they're getting what they knew they were getting. It's the number one fantasy quarterback. And like you were saying, T, real football aside, I think we're going to start seeing Josh Allen get more of that criticism that he has not been getting for the past few years just because he was looked at as, you know, the uh arch rival to pat mahomes remember we were being told it's going to be mahomes josh allen going at it for the next 10 years uh just based off that one playoff game where those guys massacred each other's defenses but when it comes down to it there are times where josh allen is playing bad real football he is more of the reason well from what i'm seeing from buffalo bills televised games uh he's sometimes the reason why they lose and it has caused some, you know, it's ruffled some feathers definitely within that organization. We've already talked about how the offensive coordinator was let go earlier this week. And now there's rumblings of Stefan Diggs being upset and people in his camp, his brother, <laughs> yep. uh, have been saying, yeah, Josh Allen was not Josh Allen until Stefan Diggs got there. And a lot of us who have believed in Josh Allen's talent coming into, you know, as a project coming into the league have to look at that and and honestly not even not even think twice about yeah, it hey facts. you know what he's got a point yeah yeah he's got a point stefan stefan diggs made case keenum look good stefan diggs made kirk cousins get paid and it looks like he's been boosting up josh allen's definitely josh allen's fantasy stats are a big chunk of those are because stefan diggs the other chunk of it is josh allen's talent but when it comes to just pure fantasy you can't argue Josh Allen is being finishing as QB one in fantasy, especially if Buffalo bills are, are fighting for their playoff lives. You know, Bombo, you make great points, but the one thing that I just can't help in the back of my mind thinking, 
how much better at this midseason could Josh Allen's uh, fantasy points and reality football be if he still had Dable? Just saying, because yeah. without Dable, you didn't see those picks. You didn't see him being put into positions where doing something stupid. You know, he was playing smart ball. So I can't help but think that his fantasy relevant points could even be off the charts even more if he still had Dable. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and lead into our next QB baller of the midseason, and that's Lamar Jackson. Mr. Lamar Jackson, 302 attempts, 210 completions. He's got 2,441 yards, 12 tutties, and five picks. But on the ground, he's got 535 yards and five rushing TDs. He is not behind Josh Allen by much. He is only behind Josh Allen by roughly 13 points or so. So think about it in that sense. Lamar has not had a stellar year. Let's just say that in real football. But with all that, look at the numbers that he's putting up because he is and it has always been the majority of that team's offense. Baltimore's offense without him just doesn't run. What do you think, Bumbo? Well, when it came to Lamar Jackson, since day one that he came in the league, we've heard it all, right? He, he's a running back playing quarterback. Uh, there were people like, you know, should they convert this guy into a running back or a wide receiver, something like that to utilize his speed. And what I've seen from Lamar this year is getting it done in the pocket and getting it done to a bunch of like ragtag pass catchers that they've put together. I'm sorry. Rashad Bateman has not been the wide receiver that everyone thought in Baltimore he would be when they drafted him with such high pedigree. Zay Flowers has started to come on, but he's it's real spotty. Nelson Aguilar is there who's getting, you know, he's getting touchdowns, but he's he's also real like boomer bust. Mark Andrews is consistent, but as we all know this week Mark Andrews lost for the season and somehow Lamar Jackson is still getting it done in the pocket. And he's, he's doing what we see like Mahomes do. And that's playing wide receiver by committee. Whoever the wide receiver is that catches a dot from Lamar Jackson is going to be the guy that eats that day. Even Odell Beckham's ghost just went off this past Thursday for four catches for like 115 yards. So, you know, Lamar Jackson getting it done as a passer. Yeah, no, it's funny you say that. Don't mean to stop you, but it's funny you mentioned Odell because what I was just going to say too is over the past two weeks, uh, you know, Odell Beckham's ghost has been showing up for whatever reason out of nowhere. I mean, the guy's been silent for the majority of the first half. And now all of a sudden we're seeing him over the last two weeks. So yeah, you're absolutely right with that one. I expect, I expect Lamar. And like you were saying earlier, T they are winning real football games. Lamar Jackson isn't putting up video game numbers um, for fantasy managers, but I expect the back half of this season uh, to go to be really fantasy friendly to to be really fantasy friendly for the Ravens and we're going to get those blow up Lamar games now in the back half of the season when it matters. I think the Lamar Jackson owners uh are going to really like to hear that from you Bombo. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go into our last balling QB of the midseason and that's none other than Jalen Hurts. This guy is having himself another solid year. Uh, again, Bombo, to your point, what you heard in the early days about Lamar Jackson, you heard the same thing about Jalen Hurts. Can this kid get it done? And to be honest with you, in college, this guy was all world. And then he goes into the pros, and then they start questioning him, and it's like, why? So what has he done this year? 305 attempts, 210 completions, 2,347 yards throwing, 15 tutties. That's more than Lamar throwing. And then his rushing, 316 yards rushing and seven tutties rushing. This guy, of course, you know, I'm just going to preface it, uh, Bombo, by saying that tush push. We got that tush push, so that kind of mm. helps. Yeah. And you know it. But, I mean, let's think about this, right? Let's break this down. Jalen Hurts is a solid fantasy QB1 in any league. It doesn't matter. I drafted this guy one year early before he blew up and everybody was making fun of me. The next year, I didn't draft him, but the guys that did draft him, they went off. 
and I was one year too early. It was just, it, it's kind of sad to see, but it's also nice to know that we can recognize that talent before it actually hits. So what do you think about his year so far? I think, so this is what the, the recipe for fantasy success. Jalen Hurts equals already a dog, already a baller, mixed with, surround him with a ton of weapons. So he's got weapons on the outside with Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. He's got a very capable and big target at tight end. And he has a stable of running backs that can all catch the ball. Uh, some of them are doing better than others. And he also is an athlete that gets all the goal line carries. I think it's almost time to start, and I'm I'm just this is just me right now. It's almost time to start putting Jalen Hurts in the spot that everyone's been talking about with Josh Allen all these years. And the difference is Jalen Hurts has actually got his team to a Super Bowl and went over. And all he needs to do now is get over that hump. I I still think the Jalen Hurts disrespect outside of Philadelphia is way too much. Um, we're talking about this guy should probably now be looked at as the first quarterback coming off the board in fantasy draft starting next year. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, you know, just from a name, of course, if Mahomes is out there or Josh Allen by name, you're going to get those guys that are going to want to grab him. But for those smart fantasy owners, they're going to go after a guy like Jalen Hurts first and foremost. Absolutely. That's a great call out, Bombo. All right. That wraps up our QBs. And that's going to lead us into our baller running backs of the midseason. And number one on the list, without a shadow of a doubt, is it even close? And that is none other than Mr. Christian McCaffrey of the San Francisco 49ers. Eh, he hasn't really done much of a, you know, to get that kind of hype. He, his, he's had a mediocre year so far. He's only had 747 yards rushing on the ground, nine tutties. He's had another 339 yards receiving with four tutties receiving. This guy, when he's healthy, this is what he could do, and this is what everybody expects from him. Even when he was with Carolina, he was putting up this type of numbers when he was healthy. The only difference is this offense is just a juggernaut and can get him the ball at will and block and get him open. So I just think it's not even surprising. Let's just put it that way. We're seeing what he can do because we know this. This is the CMC that we all know. Yeah, T, you hit it on the head. You hit every talking point. Almost 1,200 yards at this point in the season of offense for one guy is crazy. So everyone that didn't do the whole zero running back draft strategy, and we were seeing mocks, right, T, of like McCaffrey going past pick number five in some mock drafts. There were some times where McCaffrey wasn't even coming off as the first running back on the board. We saw drafts where Eckler and Bijan Robinson were going ahead of Christian McCaffrey. Yep. I don't know of a league where any league that I'm playing in where someone has Christian McCaffrey, that team is playoff bound and it's just due to picking the best available player. And I don't, we've, we were talking about it preseason. I didn't see where, how in any situation, B. John Robinson could be drafted ahead of Christian McCaffrey, knowing that we know what Christian McCaffrey does. I'll say it until my face turns blue. The downside with drafting Christian McCaffrey is he might get hurt. The upside for drafting Christian McCaffrey is you might win your league. It's a no-brainer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the fact that everybody was picking Bijan above, we were all saying this when we were watching it go down in real time in these mocks. We're like, I don't understand it. I guess everybody wants to be that next guy to be able to land a hot rookie. And that's really what it boiled down to and what might have been driving it. But you're, you're right, Bombo. I mean, how could you do that? A guy like CMC, he's got to go number one off of that board. If you're going to get a running back, he's the guy to grab right away. If he's there. Yep. And, one, and one thing to add, T, sorry, one thing to add. If you watched the 49ers game this past week, Christian McCaffrey had a touchdown streak going, right? I want to say 16 consecutive games of scoring a touchdown. In garbage time, if within a minute left in the game, Shanahan was putting Christian McCaffrey in there with the backups just to get him that touchdown. They tried. Fantasy managers that see yeah, fantasy managers that see that should have been that that should have popped their eyes up wide open because that means Shanahan is trying to help your fantasy team. With when, when all these like Belichicks and all these other people that obviously do not care about your fantasy team, whereas the 49ers look like they're trying to get their guys some stats, buy into that 49ers offense starting with Christian McCaffrey. All day long. All right, Bombo. 
Number two on this list for running back ballers midseason, Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne, 618 yards on the ground, another 275 receiving. He's got seven rushing TDs, one passing TD, 170 uh, fantasy points. He's having himself a really good year for a Jacksonville offense that is kind of hot and cold at times. But he's that bright spot. He's that Mr. Go-To guy on that Jacksonville squad that you can count on points week in and week out. And it's proven it out so far. What do you think? You've had stock in Etienne since he's been in the league. And I'm going to say the number one thing that stands out to me with Etienne is the zero fumbles loss. Remember last year, he was butterfingers. Like the guy was losing fumbles. There was questions if that's going to impact his playing time. Then you had the preseason drafting of uh, Tank Bigsby and Tank Bigsby was getting drafted. Like he was literally getting drafted like in the double digit rounds because people thought that he was going to eat into Travis Etienne's touches. Travis Etienne has proved to be one of the few straight up horses in the league. Workhorse. Bell cow. Workhorse. Yeah. Workhorse bell cow player. And it doesn't even matter if it doesn't even matter if the Jags have been struggling offensively. They're not going to turn away from what they're doing. They're still going to give Etienne those opportunities. And I have Etienne finishing with, if we're talking about top running backs, he's going to be one, two, or three by the end of the year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And if, as long as they continue to run him the way that they're running him, that offense pretty much predicates itself through Etienne at this point. Everything in that offense starts and stops with Etienne. I know you got Trevor Lawrence there. We'll get into that later. But right now, for this, Etienne is the man. All right. And the last running back on that list, Bombo. This is kind of shocking to be on this list, but he's really not. And that's why he's on this list. Is He hasn't put on, up the type of numbers that we kind of anticipated that he should early in his career. He's had some great seasons with some great teams and great offenses. But now it's coming together. I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't think this could last for the, the full year, but we're talking about Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert, early in his career, when he was with San Francisco, he was a stud. Then he goes, fast forward, he's in Miami. He's in a, an, another amazing offense, and he's a stud still. Now, they've tried everything that they can to get rid of him, replace him. There's, you know, trying to, to trade for Jonathan Taylor and all these guys. And of course, if you're going to be able to upgrade, upgrade. Absolutely. You want that as a real NFL team. Doesn't help your fantasy league if you're a Mostert owner, but it helps the team. That being said, he has quietly had himself a hell of a fantasy season mid-year so far. What has he done? 605 yards rushing, 151 yards receiving, 11 touchdowns rushing, two touchdowns receiving. He has had a couple fumbles. Now, out of the, all three of these guys, he has the most fumbles. But with that said, him and Etienne are tied for fantasy points. This guy's a beast. Even with A-Chain there, yes, granted A-Chain got hurt. But even with that backfield, that is a two-headed monster if we ever see one. And you talk about two-headed monsters all the time, Bombo. You're really good at pointing those things out. This obviously is that type of situation, but he's still getting his points for those fantasy owners that have stock in him. Yeah. Raheem Mostert and the Dolphins in general is the good side of trust the process. T, you and I talk football a lot, and we were both really skeptical on the Dolphins after the whole Brian Flores thing, which seems to get brushed under the rug a little bit too easily for me right now, but that's a whole different show. But the whole like getting paid to tank and doing all this, they bring in McDaniels as the coach. And he just built his process, which is a copy of what they're doing in San Francisco, which is that zone running scheme, multiple backs that could all do one cut and gone in a cloud of dust. And it just seems like Moster stepped up and to what your point of saying, the Jonathan Taylor rumors, the drafting of a running back. All he did was look at that as motivation to stay a stay healthy and b run like a horse. Raheem Mostert, if you look at him, he's running super hard. He's He looks like a guy that's playing for his job, even though he's not. The coaching staff obviously is familiar with him from his days in San Francisco. They 
have his old running mate, Jeff Wilson, there with him. Yeah, they brought in a, a speedy back in that was supposed to be more of a gadget guy. But if you look at it, Mostert put up his best days with A-Chain being in there putting up his best days. So two-headed monster is a two-headed dragon. Like this guy, these guys are <laughs> Good point. able to feed off each other and do everything that they can. I mean, they put it like that 70-point blowout with Denver earlier really set it off. And for all those that are saying that Mostert's, and there are a lot, is a lot of talk that Mostert and A-Chain's games were really impacted by that two game stretch of them just putting up monster numbers when it comes down to it Raheem Mostert has been one of the most consistent backs all year best thing for fantasy is if you have him you pretty much got him in like a round 12 or maybe even got him off the waiver wire and that's why you're sitting where you're sitting with Mostert and also you didn't trade him so for those who have Mostert enjoy that awesome gift from the fantasy gods all right I, I represent that right now Bombo I represent that because I picked him up off the waiver wire. He went undrafted in one of my leagues and I got him off that waiver wire and I picked him up early and everybody was like, huh, why would you do that? And they're looking at my other stable of running backs and they're like, it doesn't make sense. And then I plugged him in and he started bawling and going off for me with points and I was just tearing it up. So uh, it's a great call out. And I, I represent that small minority, I think, that was able to do that. All right, going on to our midseason wide receiver ballers. Oh, this is like, come on. This is so easy. This is fish in a barrel. Number one, the cheetah, Tyreek Hill. Cheetah's done nothing this year to represent any kind of being on this list. No, no, not all. all he's ever done is, let's see, eight tutties for a thousand seventy six yards he's already at the mid year point had a thousand yards receiving that's just impressive he's only had one fumble doesn't really do rushes so we're not going to talk about rushing when it comes to the wide receivers but he has had himself a year so far this Miami offense is predicated around the cheetah and I gotta love what I see with this guy yeah, he got kind of dinged up a little bit. We don't know, you know, if he was going to go and if he wasn't. And even when he was only at 50%, he still got tutties. He still got his points. He still got everything for those fantasy owners that have him. This guy is just, he's quarterback proof. He's everything proof. This guy is just all world. What do you think? Yeah, we don't even have to spend too much time on Tyreek Hill. Everyone that drafted Tyreek Hill where they drafted him is getting the, a great return on investment. Uh, a thousand yards at this point in the season and just receiving is wild. Um, also, it's how he's doing it. So he's not just taking the top off of defenses, but he's doing exactly what he was doing in KC, taking a slant 80 yards to the house. And what really stands out to me is all of the Tua bashing that was going on when Tyree Kill got there. Everyone was like, well, how is he going to be able to survive getting this underthrown all the time? And Tyree is going gonna, is gonna to suffer from Tua's bad arm. And all they've done is, like we said earlier, trust that process, trust that offense, and Tyreek Hill is a monster for fantasy yet again. Absolutely, Bombo. But I'm going to be that guy that's going to point out that I'm the guilt, one of those guilty ones that were kind of too abashing, saying, how is Tyreek going to get his stats? I was more cautious about it. But, hey, I've been proven wrong already, and I love it. I love being wrong. It's good. There were two I couldn't see though. <laughs> oh, there, there are a couple of games last well, year where two I couldn't see, so that's it's fair. It's fair, but hey, still, I'm glad that they proved us wrong. All right, yeah. so that leads us into number two. The number two guy, before I say his name, I just want to say this this guy has been drafted high every single year in every league. You know it, I know it, but it never pans out for any of those fantasy owners that get him. And that's the problem. That's why I've never really been able to draft him high and others have. But this year is proving this is why he's on the baller and not the overachiever is because he's actually doing what he should have been doing had he been healthy all these years. And that is none other than Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers. This guy gets drafted high every single year and he just Nothing happens because he just gets hurt every single year. This year so far, mid-year, he's had 895 yards receiving, and he's had six tutties. This guy is having a great season. 
So he's sitting at 205 fantasy points and he is having probably one of the best years that he has had mid season thus far. What do you think? You hit it all on the head T Keenan Allen outside of charger fans. Keenan Allen really didn't never was getting that type of hype as far as a guy that he was a receptions guy, right? He's a guy that's going to catch a lot of balls. He's a guy that isn't taking the top off the defense. He's showing it all this year and put on your tinfoil hats. Here comes a take, a controversial take, right? I think it's about time to stop saying that Justin Herbert is this all world talent and start saying Justin Herbert looks good because he's had Keenan Allen his whole career. I'm just going to throw that out there because honestly, everyone's been waiting for this Justin Herbert to take that next step. But we've seen a couple of plays at, especially this year with Mike Williams going down early where Keenan Allen had to take. That's the other thing. Keenan Allen has been playing through injuries. So kudos to him. He's been playing like a dog, but Keenan Allen not being in that offense and Herbert trying to find other weapons outside of Eckler on the outside and over the middle of the field, just not, has not been going, has not been happening. And yes, people are going to say it's because he has a broken hand. He's got a broken finger on the other hand that he throws with. So let's not make that excuse for him. If he was really that hurt, they wouldn't have him out there. I'm just saying pump the brakes on the Herbert hype and start really giving Keenan Allen his flowers. Yeah. Keenan Allen does deserve his flowers, no doubt, this year. This is what happens when you could play so far a full year and you're that number one Mm -hmm. guy and you're showing it. And to your point, Bombo, he has always been known as that possession guy and now he is showing everything in his toolbox. This guy is pulling some crazy catches out. He's doing things I've never seen him do before. And I love to see this happening. Not to get too far off topic, but you are right about the Herbert thing. I'm with you on that one. Like he's, he's mediocre or average or maybe slightly above average. He's tier two. He's not tier one. Let's just throw it out there. Let's just say that. All right. And our last guy on this wide receiver list. This guy's a stud. We knew it. And as soon as this trade happened, you and I were on the phone with each other going, oh, my God, Mm -hmm. during the draft. And that is none other than A.J. Brown. 1,005 yards receiving, six tutties for 67 catches, targeted 92 times. Come on. The only ones that he is behind in targets is Tyreek Hill, Keenan Allen, and Stephon Diggs. And maybe Jamar Chase. That's it. Like he is one of the top targeted guys in his offense. He's got 203 fantasy points so far. Man, I don't know how much I can say about this guy. This guy, I got him in a league. And I'm telling you, I love the fact that he just balls out. He's getting me mad points every single week. This offense is just brilliant. I love it as a fantasy owner. What do you think, Bombo? I think whoever's running the Tennessee franchise should be on the hot seat and actively searching LinkedIn for a new job because all this trade to Philadelphia um, did was put AJ Brown on the map as an elite talent at wide receiver, get Philadelphia into a Super Bowl, and make them a perennial powerhouse in the NFC for as long as this core is together. Meanwhile, Tennessee has DeAndre Hopkins not catching touchdowns and a but and just an abysmal offense going forward. So AJ Brown, whoever got AJ Brown out of town, kudos to you. He's in the right situation. And the best thing about AJ Brown's situation is at any point, he can go nuclear. And at the very least, he's gonna by the amount of times he gets targeted. His floor is double digit. So you're either getting 10 or 40, and that's fantastic for where you drafted A.J. Brown. Like we said earlier with Jalen Hurts, it's almost time to start talking about A.J. Brown being at least one of the first three wide receivers drafted in drafts going forward. Yeah, and the other guy that's not on this list that we are kind of not shocked, only just because he's been hurt, is Justin Jefferson. And... Obviously, that guy's one of the number one wide receivers to come off the board no matter what. If if you have any of any of these guys, if you have Tyreek Hill, AJ Brown, and Justin Jefferson on the board, that's gonna be the hardest thing is which guy do you go for? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It's like who do you who do yeah. you draft? You know? All right. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap up our wide receivers for midseason ballers. And we we're gonna go ahead and 
go into our tight ends. Wah, wah. Yeah, I know. It's mm -hmm. not the most yeah. uh, <laughs> sexy type of uh, position. But there's a couple guys. There's a couple bright spots mm -hmm. in this. And that's what we kind of want to highlight to everybody. And the number one tight end so far midseason, and it's actually a little bit of a surprise, not surprise, that's TJ Hawkinson. When it comes down to fantasy points, he's performed better than Travis Kelsey this year. Kelsey struggled a little bit. Kelsey has kind of taken a step down. It's always been Kelsey and then everybody else when it comes to fantasy points, when it comes to reality, it didn't matter. But right now we're seeing TJ Hawkinson with 681 yards, four tutties. He's had a really, really good season, 161 fantasy points so far. What do you think, Bombo? So I know that we've been trashing the tight end position all year, but if you really sit back and look at it, there's been a kind of a, res a resurgence at tight end and exactly what you were just talking about, T, um, in a year where there is a guy that's above Kelsey. And then the guys that are around Kelsey are kind of floating around the same area. I mean, what we were looking at as far as stats, like one through five, Hawkinson is separated from everybody else, but that two through five is still kind of close with each other. And when it comes to Hawkinson, I'm not going to take up too much time. He is a perfect example of addition by subtraction. You subtract it, you subtract it all of Dalvin Cook's looks from last year, gone. Those are all going to Hawkinson now. And then I'm not going to say he's benefited because the team has not benefited from Justin Jefferson not being there, but Hawkinson has 100% absorbed a lot of those targets that were going to Justin Jefferson. And that's why you're seeing him get targeted so much and he turns them into yards and points. Absolutely. He's the number one targeted uh, tight end in the league. And so that you just yeah. you just hit it right on the head. I mean, that's exactly why when Justin Jefferson goes down, who else are you going to throw it to? I, yeah, okay. Well, you got the rookie wide right receiver over there. We know that, but you can't be throwing him the ball a hundred times a game. It's just not going to happen, you know. So you got to spread it out. Your offense has got to kind of diversify. And Hawkinson, he's benefited from that. All right, next guy on that list, and we just we mentioned his name is Travis Kelsey. Kelsey is still having himself a really solid year when it comes to tight ends, but he's not Travis Kelsey this year. He has kind of been up and down a little bit. That offense has been up and down too. So that offense has struggled. And with that offense, so has Kelsey. He's been dinged up too, but he's still having a pretty damn good year. 597 yards receiving, four tutties, and 140 points in fantasy. That's still damn good, solid you know, year so far mid season when it comes to tight ends, but it's not what we expect from Kelsey, but still balling. This is the TMZ portion of the show T. Um, you kind of have to buy into the superstition here of Travis. Kelsey goes off when Taylor Swift is in the stands, when she's in the owner's box with mama Kelsey and Mahomes old lady, he balls out and I, you know, football player athletes in general are real superstitious. I wouldn't be surprised if she's now at every game. And we haven't even really seen that Travis Kelsey blow up game, like those two or three that we're used to seeing throughout the year. And I think he gets it in the back half of the season. Like I said, when fantasy managers want it the most and I think Travis Kelsey is going to be fine. We really don't even have to spend too much time on Travis Kelsey balling out all year. It, it's going to happen. The biggest surprise with tight ends is Hawkinson, but it really is it. Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson, just the just what they do for their teams. As I'm gonna just say, even in Minnesota, Hawkinson is the number one receiver right now. It's always been Travis Kelsey as the number one receiver in KC in the Mahomes regime. Not, nothing to worry about there. If you have those guys, you're just gonna reap all the benefits, and the rest of the league is just gonna be jealous. Perfectly said. You're absolutely right, 100. percent All right, then the last guy on this list, and this is gonna go ahead and wrap us up on all of our ballers. And the reason why this guy is not on the overachiever is because Bombo's been calling this guy out since day one. I've been calling this guy out. We have been talking about this guy, hyping him up. The hype train was there when it came to Fantasy Island hyping this guy up. We should have been on his payroll. That's all I'm saying. And that's Sam Laporta in Detroit. That's the reason why they traded away Hawkinson is because they knew that they had a guy in Laporta. And Laporta is a stud. And that's why he's not on the overachievers, because we knew he was a stud. What has he done so far this year? He's had 474 yards receiving, four tutties, no fumbles, no nothing, 
and 118 fantasy points. Guys, Sam Laporta is a legit tight end that is going to be contending and getting you points every single week in, week out, every down. That's the type of guy he is, and he's hard to take down. He's a big guy, and he doesn't go down easy. What do you think, Bombo? I, I already know what you're going to say because you were the guy that was calling this out. You were the guy that was saying Sam Laporta before anybody else, so credit to you. Thank you, T. In multiple leagues, uh, I went, you know, if you can't get a Hawkinson, a Kelsey or Andrews um, with those roll of the dice picks really early in your draft. What I've always done was just do my homework on the tight end position, which is abysmal every year. And the name that was just sticking out to me pre-draft was Sam Laporta, just because of the Hawkinson thing that you mentioned. Hawkinson isn't Campbell's guy in doesn't mean Hawk, Hawkinson wasn't traded from the lions because he sucks or because they needed whatever they were going to get from Minnesota. It's just that if we can replicate what Hawkinson does, but with our own guy and get some capital back for him, it's a no-brainer. And Sam Laporta is Campbell's guy for the Lions, and he's just one key piece to this monster offense that's that's being put on the field every Sunday. And don't want to get too much into it, but it's good to hit on some of these. And we've all definitely failed on on using this same strategy, but it's good when you get it right. And Sam Laporta has gotten it right for everyone that has stock in Sam Laporta. Uh, and here's the other thing. Sam Laporta is not that far off from those top guys that we've mentioned before. So savvy fantasy owners have probably tried to work Sam Laporta and a piece into a deal to try to get a Hawkinson or a Kelsey. And if you were able to deal Laporta for a Kelsey or a Hawkinson, guess what? That's still a win for you and your draft strategy of getting him. Or for you guys that were able to get him off the waiver wire, he should even have been on your waiver wire if you're listening to the show. But if you're able to get him off the lay waiver wire, it's the same thing we said with Mostert. That is the reason why you are where you are right now in your league. Oh, yeah. The guys that were able to steal him away or, or even just steal him in the draft, those are the types of guys that you're going to see sitting at the top of, of your fantasy leagues, and you're going to be scratching your head saying, how did this guy know? How, how is this guy's team doing? Where did this guy come from? Like, you know, those are the types of cats that are, are second guessing themselves and they're second guessing their draft for sure. All right. So that's going to go ahead and wrap us up for this edition of mid season fantasy ballers. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully you enjoy this. Hopefully you guys are continuing to listen. We got bums coming up and we have our overachievers. Bombo, good job as always. Always love talking with you about this stuff. Always good insight. Great job. So for Bombo, thanks, T. I'm Sweet T, and we are out.